On the 23rd day of October, Halloween gave to me 23 Cushing's ghouling, 22 Rutgers glaring, 21 babies killing, 20 horse head snorting, 19 D's renting, 18 Frank's perving, 17 angels stripping, 16 demons jazzercising, 15 runes on parchment, 14 Joseph's whispering, 13 seniors bleeding, 12 creepy masks, 11 dancing demons, 10 Catholic monsters, 9 priests a miracling, 8 Jerry's vamping, 7 Jody's oinking, 6 body swapping, 5 reeds a wolfing, 4 drunken uncles, 3 werewolf colonies, 2 spooky sisters, and a psycho who killed Janet Lee. Well, hey there, everyone, and welcome to the 23rd film in our 31 days of Halloween. It is, of course, October 23rd. Happy Saturday to you. Hope you're having a great weekend. I know I am. I will be doing haunted houses tonight, so I'm very excited. This continues the, that sort of home stretch of movies that I mentioned before, where a lot of these are movies I haven't seen in a while, or movies I really like a lot, or movies that are, I have heard classics that I need to see. We're getting to that soon. And this is sort of a comfort food movie for me in a lot of ways. Uh, of course, this is 1972's Tales from the Crypt, which ostensibly is based on the William Gaines EC comics like Tales from the Crypt and Vault of Horror and that kind of thing. Although it bears only a passing resemblance. I mean, the stories are there for sure, but the Crypt Keeper is a little formal. I suppose, compared to what you would expect from Tales from the Crypt, especially with, like, the HBO series Crypt Keeper and so forth. Um, the Crypt Keeper in this film is played by Sir Ralph Richardson, uh, I think is his name. And he is very, like, uh, this cloaked figure that is delivering these lines very seriously. You have come to this place. Anyway, so these five knuckleheads find their way into a crypt, they don't know how they got there uh, necessarily, and they are now trapped in a room with a becloaked Sir Ralph Richardson, who is telling them uh, stories or, or showing them visions of uh, their lives. And it's a little bit of a cheat, even though if you've ever seen horror movies before, you kind of know what's going on here. But he says, this is a warning. And he shows them each a story. The The people involved are uh, Joan Collins and Martin Body, um, Ian Hendry. Um, who else is involved with this? Robin Phillips uh, is, is part of this. At any rate, a number of great British actors. One Notably, there's a, uh, a guy named Patrick McGee who shows up in the last story that you'll probably know if you've ever seen A Clockwork Orange because he was the guy who, uh, you know, Alex and his droogies break into his house and uh, kill his wife and so forth. And it's always weird for me to see him in anything that isn't A Clockwork Orange, even though he's a very storied actor with a great career. That's just the the a character I most associate with him, uh, which is also one of the most horrifying things in the history of cinema. So, at any rate, it is uh, directed by Freddie Francis, who directed a number of great British horror films, uh, directed The Vault of Horror, I believe, not long after this, did a movie called The Vampire Happening, which uh, I really enjoy. I think that's a terrific movie, um, but did a number of other movies as, as well. Um, did Son of Dracula, did Trog, directed Trog, uh, did the Deadly Bees and the Psychopath and They Came From Beyond Space, um, Tales That Witness Madness, so I was wrong, he, he didn't do Vault of Horror, but uh, the guy who wrote this, Milton Thurnby, uh, or I'm sorry, Milton Sabotsky, who has a great name by the way, if you can get yourself a name like Milton Sabotsky, do it, but Milton Sabotsky wrote this and uh, also wrote Vault of Horror is why I was mixing that up. And uh, he also was kind of a storied screenwriter in, you know, British horror uh, and genre movies in, in particular. Uh, did, like, wrote the Doctor Who movies with Peter Cushing, 
wrote Dr. Terror's House of Horrors, wrote The Skull, um, I Monster, which is a great title, wrote At the Earth's Core. Earth's Core. Um, so yeah, it comes from a pretty good pair, pedigree, and like, neither of these dudes were first-timers when they got around to Tales from the, the Crypt. It is uh, directed very straightforward. There's not a whole lot of flash when it comes to either the writing or the direction of this. But they're pretty good stories for the most part. And we'll talk about each of them a little bit. Uh, the first story involves Joan Collins. And Joan Collins uh, is the all through the house story. And that's been adapted a couple of times at this point. Where she kills her husband and then hears on the radio, Hey, there's a psychopath on the loose wearing a Santa Claus costume. And it's sort of her, her being terrorized by this guy a little bit. But it's played pretty straight, and so it's not very tense, I would argue. Um, and, it, you know, it, it's, I think, the flattest of the stories because it's just so straightforward. There's not a whole lot to it. Um, but, you know, she's she, Joan Collins is fine in it, and, it, and it's good. It's a good setup, and there's one pretty good jump scare in it. So, all things being equal, not the best, but it's fine. Uh, then you have a story called Reflection of Death in which uh, this guy, Ian Hendry, plays a guy named Carl Maitland who like leaves, leaves his house and you can tell that he is about to leave his family on account of when he says goodbye to his daughter for the night. She's like, good night, daddy. And he's like, goodbye, child. <laughs> like he is, he is about to fuck off well and good. And not have any part of this family anymore. So he goes to pick up his uh, girlfriend, Susan. And he's like, you know, I gotta say, I just never saw this coming. But you know how it is. You fall in love and your entire life changes. And kind of fuck my wife and family, right? So let's get out of here. And then he has a vision that uh, they go off the road and... Um, getting a car crash because of a, a car coming at him in the wrong lane and Susan's driving and you know let's all blame the, wo the woman driver for this one at any rate so after he comes to and goes searching for uh, Susan and his wife and family uh, they're horrified by him he like runs into a bum who's like who freaks out and screams when he shows up um, when he gets to Susan's house uh, it turns out that she is now blind because of this car accident and uh, he has been dead for two years and has come back as a corpse for some reason. So he finally sees his reflection, hence the the title Reflection of Death. And uh, yeah, and that's kind of it. Um, then we get into the good stuff. Those two are okay, but now the back three are where things get real. So, the next one up is Poetic Justice, which may be my favorite of the bunch, in which uh, there's this shitty rich kid named Robin Phillips, who, uh, or that's the actor's name, James is uh, the, the name in the, in the story, but they live, he and his father have this big, nice house, uh, it's a very wealthy neighborhood, but... There is one holdout where uh, there's an older house owned by a guy named Crimsdyke, who is played by Peter Cushing. And so this shitty kid, James, decides that he wants to get Crimsdyke out of the neighborhood because he's tired of looking at this eyesore of a house and he just hates poor people in general, I think. And so he goes on this campaign to get rid of Peter Cushing. And Peter Cushing is just this nice old man. His wife has died. So he's a, a junk man. His job is like working with the city garbage collection or whatever. And he takes toys that he finds in the trash, fixes them, and gives them to the local children of the neighborhood. He couldn't be a nicer person. His biggest flaw is that he's got a, he's got a bunch of dogs that bark all the time in a little pen. And that's a little bit of a problem, but whatever. And so, the shitty kid James calls the authorities on these dogs and, and says, that, hey, they're unlicensed, they don't, they don't have papers or anything, they bark all the time, and yada, yada, yada. And kind of sets it up so it looks like the dogs have dug up the neighbor's roses, and that kind of initiates the complaint. 
And so uh, all of Peter Cushing's dogs are taken away from him, which is a blow, but he's still, you know, hanging in there. And then uh, they start talking about how it's creepy. James and and his father tell the neighbors, like, hey, isn't it kind of weird that all the kids go to his house? And what are his motives, after all? And doesn't that seem a little untoward? And they're like, yeah, I guess it does seem a little weird. And so they end up having to, uh, you know, tell their kids, all these parents in the neighborhood are telling the kids, hey, you, well, we don't want you hanging out with this Crimstock guy anymore. And so his dogs are gone. And now all of a sudden the kids who he sort of lived for, love to repair toys and give toys to and all that, they stop coming around. And uh, then uh, insult to injury come Valentine's Day. This shitty kid James has written a bunch of poison pen pal letters in the in the shape of uh, Valentine's cards to Peter Cushing, and they're all you know terrible cards like hey you know roses are red violets are blue uh, we wish uh, you know disease would go away just like you shit like that that's not one of them but you get it the idea is that it's just a bunch of poems. Hence the the title "Poetic Justice." A bunch of poems where uh, they're telling uh, Peter Cushing that he should die. And what no one knows about Peter Cushing though is that he has the this like spiritual beyond the grave connection with his wife, who is warning him of danger, but he doesn't totally heed it. And the next thing you know, uh, Peter Cushing has hung himself. Because of uh, all these letters and, you know, the fact that the kids are shunning him now. He gets fired from his job. James gets him fired from his job. It's just the shittiest. Like, this kid, James, is the worst. And so, a year to the day, a year to the day of Valentine's Day in which Peter Cushing took his own life, he rises from the grave and goes to the shitty kid, James, and murders him. And the father finds him the next day with a poem of... And it's something like, you know, you're a terrible person. You were bad from the start, but that doesn't matter because you have no. And then you unroll the paper and his heart is there, like literally still beating in the paper, which I don't think is medically how that works. But who cares? It's awesome. That story is so good. Peter Cushing is such a sweet old man. And uh, the makeup work when uh, he rises from the grave is really good, too. It's uh, a, a really great corpsey look you've probably seen that picture floating around even if you've never seen 1972's tales from the crypt you've probably seen that image of the the dead and corpsified uh peter cushing it's so good oh i love this one so much so poetic justice total banger great one then we get a story called wish you were here which is obviously a monkey's paw story and in fact the characters talk about the monkey's paw in the story So what it is, is this couple who are in dire straits financially, you know, they're losing the business and uh, to the bank and potentially their home and so forth. And the husband and wife, uh, the wife in particular notices, Hey, you know, this old statue that you got forever ago, um, there's some writing at the bottom of it that says that it grants three wishes, but to be careful on account of how wishes can backfire and, the guy's like, yeah, maybe we shouldn't screw with that. Like, we got enough problems to deal with. Besides, uh, have you ever seen uh, that story, The Monkey's Paw? Like, things just don't work out when you start wishing on on objects. And she's like, no, 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 I got this. I wish that we had lots and lots of money. That's all. That's all I'm going to wish for. It's cool. And he's like, all right, we'll see how this goes. Oh, I got a call from our lawyer. I need to go talk to him about all this financial trouble we're having. So... He takes off for the lawyers, sees this dude behind him on a motorcycle in a skull helmet, which is not what you expect to see. And uh, anyway, ends up dying in a car accident. Well, we think he died in a car accident, but so he he dies and leaves a bunch of money to the wife and the attorney uh, who is informing her like, hey, you're a a rich woman now. She's like, oh my God, I wished on this statue and then my husband died and left me all this money. Oh, I should have listened to him. 
I, I'm going to wish for him to come back. And the lawyer's like, whoa, whoa, whoa. I read the monkey's paw too, and fucked up stuff happens when you do that. I would recommend that you do not, in fact, wish for your husband to come back. And she's like, no, 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 I got this. I'm gonna, I'm gonna get it right. And so she wishes for her husband, husband to come back. And so all of a sudden, a bunch of people just bring his coffin in, and she's like, oh, not like that. Oh, I fucked up. Okay, all right. So I'm gonna get this right. I wish my husband would come back and be like he was right before the accident and stay that way forever. All of a sudden, there's banging from inside the coffin. And they open it up, and it turns out that her husband didn't die in the car accident. He had a heart attack right before the car accident. And so he comes back, but he is in a perpetual state of pain because he is now a living organism that can't die and his blood has been filled with formaldehyde and he wakes up just screaming <laughs> and like please you gotta stop this and uh, she tries to kill him by hacking him up but because she wished that he would stay alive forever he doesn't die he just is alive in pieces now and it's a real something, man. There's a, a shot of his intestines that is pretty shocking for the time. Although the images of the uh, lopped off hands maybe not quite so good. But it, again, banger of a story. And it's not super long. It gets to the point. And the, the ending of it is horrifying. It is so good. And so we get to our final story, which is called Blind Alleys which is about another real asshole named Major Rogers who goes to uh, run a home for the blind. One of the uh, residents there being that guy, Patrick McGee from uh, Clockwork Orange. And he's just a real hard ass former military guy who cuts down on the heat at night and doesn't feed the residents very well because he's trying to scrimp and save and, and make the place profitable or something. And basically pushes all of the residents to hate him. And in fact, uh, they go to him at one point because they're like, Hey man, we got this sick friend of ours, uh, because you know, it's cold all the time at night and you're not feeding us very well. And so he's very sick and major Rogers, along with his dog, Shane, who is his constant companion goes to check on this dude. And he's like, Oh, don't worry about it. He's dead now. That's that problem has solved itself. And, and so all these blind folks, uh, what live at this residence, um, end up capture, like luring the dog away from, uh, Captain Rogers or Major Rogers and lock the dog away. Then they lock Major Rogers in another room where he can hear the dog barking. And he's like, please feed my dog. And they're like, in time, Major Rogers, in time. And so he can hear them building shit. And that goes on for a little bit while he's like begging for food and water and begging for them to take care of his dog. And, you know, he's a real shit, so kind of who cares? I mean, the dog is, is that's an unfortunate uh, collateral damage here. But whatever happens to Major Rogers, as the audience, we are like, oh, yeah, whatever he gets is not going to be bad enough. But it's still pretty good. Because what they do is they build essentially a pen where they finally, after two or three days, they open the door to this pen and or to the room that they've kept him in. And it's this hallway that they've designed that he can't get out of. So he has to sort of follow this pathway that they've built along one side of the pathway. Uh, as you turn a corner is a stretch of the hallway that is nothing but razor blades lodged into the wall and so he has to kind of turn sideways and and weave his way through that and he cuts his hand a couple of times and cuts his face and stuff like that uh but gets through it and then gets to another bend that leads to another door and this is where you know carter the patrick mcgee guy he pulls that door open and it's shane the Major's German Shepherd, who hasn't eaten for three days, suddenly face-to-face -face with a bleeding man. And Shane runs after him, and then the guy realizes, like, oh, I either let this dog eat me or I run willy-nilly through this hallway of razor blades. 
and it kind of ends there, but it's a real saw trap kind of thing, and it rocks. And uh, and then the the end of it is the crypt keeper being like, "Well, it wasn't really a warning. I'm just telling you what happened that got you here in hell." And it has a real like I- I'm gonna turn to the camera and, and accuse the audience of of uh, being evil people as well. Like uh, everyone has a story. Who's next? Maybe you. And looks at the screen and whatnot. But anyway, all that hamminess aside, and Ralph Richardson, you know, delivers it with uh, with austerity and whatnot. But you know, all anthologies are kind of the sum of their parts, and. I like that Tales from the Crypt, it has a couple that aren't great, but they're not terrible, and those are also fairly short. And then you get into those back three, all of which are really, really good, and it, it, you know, like, it sticks the landing, that Peter Cushing Poetic Justice one is so good. Uh, I just love this movie. It's one of those that I can kind of throw on any time, have it rolling in the background, you know, stop and, oh, look, this is the part where Peter Cushing comes out of the grave, or, you know, this is the part where that guy is going to wake up in a coffin screaming horribly. It's, yeah, all of that stuff is great. It's a terrific Halloween movie because uh, you can kind of, you know, uh, take your bites and, like, if you're getting your jack-o'-lanterns together, it's about that time when when jack-o'-lanterns ought to be made. You can uh, sit down with the newspaper and your pumpkins and turn on uh, 72's Tales from the Crypt. Have a wonderful time. It's, you know, not necessarily for kids because even though it was made in 1972 and there's nothing especially graphic about it. I mean, those, the, the guts that you see in the Monkey's Paw episode are pretty, are pretty gory, but it's just kind of dark and mean. Uh, I wish that the Crypt Keeper were a little more fun in this, but that's kind of my only complaint. Everything else about it, I really dig. So, yeah, you absolutely uh, ought to check that out. Uh, if you've never seen 72's Tales from the Crypt, do. It's really good for the Peter Cushing story alone, but the the other two at, at the end are really good as well. So, or maybe you disagree, and if you do, then uh, you can drop me a line over at Legion Podcasts. Uh, on Facebook or Twitter or Instagram and uh, and tell me if you agree or disagree or whatever. Uh, but that's going to do it for today. That, I mean, good Lord. I've given you pearls here, people. Uh, Tales from the Crypt, great movie. You ought to see it. Um, is it as good as The Hitcher? Eh, who's to say? Totally different movies, but um, they're both terrific, so enjoy them both. We've got more of this run coming. Of I mean, this is the end of the, of the 31 Days. Is just movies that I think are great and that ought to be watched this time of year. So uh, more of that is on the way. Um, and thanks for listening to this. Have have yourself a great rest of the Saturday. Do good work out there, or just get some relaxing in. Uh, whatever you do on your Saturdays, and uh, stay spooky because we've only got one more weekend left to do so. And uh, I'll see you right back here tomorrow for another in the thirty-one days of Halloween. Talk to you then. <laughs> <laughs>